Hi, welcome to Local Flavor. I'm Deborah Anderson, and my guest today is Amanda Roletter, and she's going to bring back some happy memories from all of our childhood of when, um, back in my day, fondue parties were a big thing, and I think they're coming back, and she is a fondue lover. Yes. How'd you get into this? Well, I actually have some friends that kind of got us started on it. We, we usually have at least a couple of uh, fondue parties a year. We get together and have a big group, and it's always a lot of fun. So, um, kind of got us hooked, and then we, we got a fondue pot for our wedding and added another one just a few months ago, and it's just kind of bringing more friends in and kind of catching on and spreading. Now, if you have a lot of people over and have, like we're doing four kinds of fondue today, mm -hmm. right? Um, do you have to borrow someone else's pots then? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Usually, usually you have a friend that has one or two and is like, okay, bring it over. We, ha we have them all uh, initialed so we know whose is who. And, oh, because everyone and has a cousinart. <laughs> well, <laughs> some of them do and some of them have different ones, but uh, yeah, yep, we all these come These look really nice, these do. Really okay, like so we're going to eat the kind of savory ones first, right? Yeah, we're going to start off with the oil and the broth, and I'll just kind of show you um, some food prep on what to use for the dippers to, to cook in the oil and the broth. So uh, we'll start off with prepping the meats. Um, you can use pretty much anything you like. I have steak and chicken here today. Um, we've had shrimp, we've had venison, um, duck meat. in. Once Where do you, you find that? My husband is a waterfowl hunter, okay. <laughs> so he has plenty of that. And then some of our other friends uh, hunt deer and they cut them up and just cut them up into small bite-sized pieces and then marinate them as, as you like. And then, and then we'll cook it in, in the oil and the broth and then some vegetables and, and fruit and stuff like that. So we'll start off with the food prep and I have a little bit of steak here. And I, I like to use flat iron steak. Um, it's, it's just a little easier to cut up and, and, and cook. So um, I like to cut these into, like I said, bite-sized pieces. That is the biggest flat iron steak I've ever seen. Yeah, and this is only a, a small piece of it. So <laughs> it's like the smallest one I could find in this store. So it's probably about an inch cubes. Oh, that does um, cut really nice. Yeah. And they'll cook down a little bit when you cook them in the, in the fondue, but just so you can, uh, skew them with the skewers and then and, and obviously just eat them. So we'll cut some of that up like so. And if you have children um, that are going to join you in the fondue, you might cut them up a little bit smaller. Or put a hole in the middle so they're lifesavers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not a, a bad leather. idea. I think you could do it with a leather punch. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are you marinating them in? So. Again, this is all up to you. Um, the trick to fondue is just be, be creative. Um, I marinated the steak in uh, a head country marinade. We like to use that at home for grilling and everything like that. So I have never just heard a, of that. What is it? Um, head country, they have seasoning, barbecue seasonings, marinades, a lot of that kind it's of stuff. It's a brand name. It's a brand name. Okay. Yeah. Um, the chicken is just marinated in Italian uh, salad dressing. Um, you can use buffalo sauce, again, any, mm. any way that you like to marinate it. If uh, marinate it the same way that you prep to grill is basically how we do it. Now, how much concern do you have that those flavors are going to get inside the stuff you dip in? None at all. It's not, it's not enough to change the flavor of the, of the fondue. So Okay. Yep. So we'll just throw these in here. And you'll see that the chicken is, is marinating and I have some of those small pieces of meat. Also, I have prepped um, some vegetables to use in the fondue as well. Um, broccoli, cauliflower. We have uh, cheese tortellinis. Yum. Those are fun. Um, I did some small red potatoes and cut them up into bite-sized pieces. Um, some French bread, day-old bread, uh, let it dry out a little bit so it's easier to dip. Um, and then uh, a carrots. carrot. Mm -hmm. What would I dip a carrot in? Okay, well let's get our um, dips going so we can All right. get them heated up. But I'll try a <laughs> carrot one. All right. We'll start off with the oh, what? oil. 
I'm gonna fry my carrot and broth. Yes, yeah, you can you can cook it. The broth basically kind of steams the vegetables, so that's where I like using the vegetables in the broth a little bit more than the oil. Um, and so we'll get our fondue pots here ready. On the oil, it's basically pretty easy. Um, you use about two to two and a half cups of oil. You can use canola oil or peanut oil. Yeah. Um, I have canola here because I just it's a little healthier. I like that. Um, so basically just pour your oil into the pot. I wonder if you can even buy peanut oil in a small container. I've only seen it in those Big giant tubs. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yep. I'm sure you can. And in the oil, I don't usually add any seasonings, but you very well can. Um, if you want to do like a Cajun kind of oil oh, or, yeah. you know, just have a little bit of spice or something. Um, so you'll just pour that oil in there. And turn on your fondue pot. These are actually electric pots, so they have a number dial. Some of them have a temperature dial on there. Now, how do you know what temperature you want to put it on? I usually start it off at five until okay. it starts to get like a, a little bit of a rolling, rolling boil, and then you just adjust it as as you start sticking your your food in there to see how it's how it's actually cooking. You so, don't want it to smoke for sure. Right. Right. If yep. done, if it smokes, you have to start all over. <laughs> yeah. You can't sit. You can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll let that one start heating up. Now on the broth, this is my favorite one. Really? Um, yes. I, I love broth. It makes, it makes the house smell fantastic because we'll use uh, green onion and garlic. And it, it's, I feel it's a little healthier. It's just a little lighter than using the oil. So um, starting off. I have some garlic, and I use about three, three cloves of garlic in, I mince it in my little mincer, one of my little mincers. It's just called chef's. Oh, it's Yeah, tiny. chef's meat. <laughs> it's like that old onion chopper, yeah. but tiny. I wonder. Oh, so that'll leave it in nice big chunks instead of pre like the press would right. kind of yeah. liquefy it almost. Yeah, I like my garlic, so I try to get a, as much out of it as I can. I'll go ahead and do the other through two. Do you want me to do one too, or do you want me to cut sure. up the onion? Yeah, you can cut up the onion. I have the, these herb shears here that I like to cut the onions with, and oh, you can just okay, throw great. those right in there. I have I have these same herb shears. I usually use it for cilantro. I would never. That is great for that. Am I doing it the way you would? Yep. I love these shears. I do always feel like you have to get a toothpick and push the. Yeah. Or a fork or something. Yeah. Do you go all the way to the top? Yes. Use them all. I trimmed them up. I, I cleaned them up and I trimmed them up. Um, cut off a little on both ends. So they are clean. Just, it's just a green onion. Just a green onion. And we've got our garlic, and we'll just throw that in there. While that's heating up. You go ahead, I'll just keep clipping. All right, and then I'll pull in a little bit of olive oil, just so we're gonna saute the garlic and onion a little bit in the pot before we pour in the broth. And then let's talk about what broth we'll pour in and then we'll let it heat up when we go to break. Are you gonna so, put all of this in? Yes, um, usually I use two cans of chicken broth and one can of, of beef broth. Um, again, you can be um, creative with this as you want. Um, to keep in mind, the broth will, as you guys are doing the fondue, it will boil off a little bit. So you may need to add a little bit more as you go, depending on how long your, your fondue party lasts. So um, we'll just pour the, the broth right in there. After, you want to wait till that? Yeah, so we'll let it saute here. Okay. And then we're just going to pour all of both of these. So. All let's, of that. let's do that on break since okay. it might take a few minutes for these to saute down. And when we come back, we'll dip everything in these two flavors. 
Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedarview Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. All Face Funeral Chapel and Smith Center can help you and your loved ones prepare for a difficult time with prearranged funeral planning. Not only will it be a stress reliever during a tough time, it will save your family money by locking in a guaranteed rate so funeral costs will be less of a burden. Prearranged funeral plans now have options to make paying for a funeral easier, such as a 3, 5, and 7 year payment option. Call 785-686-4120 or visit allfacefuneralchapel.com. Welcome back to Local Flavor. We have got our broth boiling and our oil is popping and we're ready to taste some of these great fondue items. Now don't the rules of fondue normally say you pick a color and stick with it? Pick a color and stick with it. That way you know wh where it you have in the pot and what's cooking. Nobody else takes your, your meat. But since there's just two of us, can I have all of the cool colors <laughs> you and you bet. can have the warm colors? <laughs> yep, that'll now, work. And this is to keep it from sliding in. Yes. This little rim. Yep. Yep. Uh, I put that in broth, I think. Yes, you did. You put some steak in the broth. I'll take some chicken here. Are you going to boil it? I'm going to oil, oil boil. Oil boil. I want to try a, um, I want to try a potato boiled. Or no, oiled. Oiled or boiled. <laughs> And keep in mind, potatoes will take a little bit longer, just like they do to bake and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but we've got our oil and our broth um, boiling here, and we can kind of take this off as well. Let that hook on there so you can kind of see um, our broth kind of quit boiling. So I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. I'm and use one of these too. Okay. A tortellini. Tortellini. I pre cooked them a little bit, but it's nice to warm those up. Um, I, I like to also use those in the cheese fondue and dip them in the cheese. Mm, that um, sounds good. We're going to do cheese and chocolate for dessert. Mm -hmm. um, with the meat and vegetables, after you've cooked them in the, in the broth and the oil, um, some ideas to do is have some sauces, steak sauce, honey mustard, um, seasonings like one of my favorite is a, a Tuscan uh, garlic seasoning that we have or like a creole seasoning so after it's cooked you can dip it in sauces or or sprinkle some seasonings on it be creative again just always be creative um, a couple more things to keep in mind your meats and everything are going to cook in the oil a little faster because it's at a hotter temperature than the broth is um, so cooking times can can vary a little bit and after a few times you'll get the kind of the gist of how long it takes to cook to your preferred doneness on, on the meats and, and everything. Um, vegetables like the broccoli and cauliflower, they won't take as long and you sometimes you tend to forget you have something cooking in the pot. So at that point in time, you may actually need to have like a little strainer or like a wire mesh ladle to kind of go in and dig things out that come off of the skewers. That happens all the time, especially if you start getting a lot of skewers around in, in, the, in the pots. Um, Suggestion from me is if you're gonna have six or more people at your party, um, have multiple fondue pots. That way not everybody is crowded around one pot and getting their skewers tangled up. Um, plus, the less skewers you have to keep track of, the less you forget what you're cooking at some time. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I remember, they're all mine except for that. Okay. <laughs> Another thing is, is I know that there's some cool apps out there on your phone that you can actually set timers. So if you're, you're cooking a piece of steak or a piece of chicken, you can set a timer on your phone and your phone will go off when that, when that is done. So you can pull that out. What do I stick this in? Bread I usually do in or the cheese. cheese. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now in the oil, you can do uh, dough balls, mm -hmm. um, oh. like frozen dough, and, and let them rise a little bit, but little dough balls, and then throw them in the oil, and actually just like fry the bread. And then after you take it out, we like to dip it in honey or cinnamon sugar, and it's amazing. So At the one fondue party I've ever been to, she cut up little Smokies into I think three pieces. I mean, they're already little Smokies, but she cut them into three pieces. And then she had like, 
maybe bisquick batter or some sort oh, okay. of batter and we dipped our little smokies in that and put them in the oil and had little tiny mini corn dogs like yeah. for a tea party. <laughs> That's really creative. I hadn't seen that done before. That's something to think about. Yeah. Um, again, be creative. Be creative. This is, you make it how you want it. I think this is done. It looks you? pretty done. Yep. My chicken's been in so there. So some of these bit. things. I just wanted to fry a carrot because I've never had a fried carrot. <laughs> I've never had a fried carrot so either. I'm going to take it. This one's probably done too. It is. Thing. It's probably going to fall Look at that. Off. Look how big it is. <laughs> so I'm going to let those cool a little bit. Yeah. And, and then we don't bite off of these. We can burn no. ourselves. Right. Um, another thing to keep in mind is when you're, when you're handling meat, obviously raw meat, don't go and put the raw meat on your plate that you're going to eat off of or, or anywhere oh, yeah. else because you don't want to contaminate it. So usually take it out of the serving dish straight into the fondue. I'm going to cut it up. You're going to taste your chicken? Yes. I'm letting it what cool, but I'm going to Now does put everyone in a piece of eat, cook one, eat it, cook one, eat it? No. Um, it's up to you. I guess it depends on how much you want to eat or not. Um, I've well, been you just get one stick. That's what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, I've been known to put multiple pieces of meat on one skewer to cook multiple pieces of meat at one time. Um, obviously, you don't want to line them all up because they need to be submerged <gasps> into the broth. Look at mine. Look how perfect that cooked. That is perfect. Can you little see that? pink? <laughs> and that is delicious seasoning. I'm gonna have you write down that seasoning brand for me. Yeah. What kind was it? What was it again? The Head Country Marinade. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. I got my chicken here. Well, let's have a little snack. Let's cook some more. Okay. And then um, we'll just eat during the break. And when we come back, we're going to try some desserts. Here come the men in black trucks for all your home needs. If you need repairs or a professional to check your home for damage, call the local guys you know and trust at AquaShield Roofing and Construction. Their five-year warranty will give you the peace of mind you need from a company that will be there to stand behind their work. Call AquaShield Roofing and Construction at 785-475-2533 or visit AquaShieldRoofing.com today. The plumber said there's something wrong with my water. It looks like you have hard water. You need a water softener. Let me show you the options we have. Hey, do you guys deliver salt? We sure do. What about drinking water? We have water coolers and drinking water systems. We even have bottled water. Find us on Facebook and itsbetterwater.com. And remember, it's not in water, it's better water. Welcome back to Local Flavor. We are here at Aunt Faith Community Kitchen in Moreland with almost full bellies, but we saved some room for our dessert fondues, or cheese isn't really a dessert. We should have had that as an appetizer. But let's get started on these. What All right. Yeah, we'll start with the um, cheese. There's a lot of different cheese recipes out there. I try to keep it simple. Um, I've done I've done it as simple as just kind of warming up some Velveeta and using <laughs> the pot to keep the, the cheese warm and seasoning. But I'm gonna use uh, some sharp cheddar and uh, Swiss cheese on this one with this some shredded Swiss. Yes. Okay. And uh, with some dry white wine and some seasonings as well in that. Um, so we'll start off with, um, yep, we'll do some white wine. And you use about one cup of this. Mm, still good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I'll just kind of eyeball it there. Um, pour that in there. And we'll turn on the fondue pot to get it simmering a little bit. In the meantime, we have the shredded, uh, it's about a half pound of shredded Swiss and a half pound of uh, shredded sharp cheddar. If you wanna use the prepackaged uh, shredded cheese, go for it, it's simpler, or you can shred your own, it's up to you. What did you do? I shredded the, the, the Swiss and I bought the uh, cheddar already shredded. So That's, it's very fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, seasonings to the cheese prior to putting it in it to, into the pot. So I have two tablespoons of flour and we'll just throw that in there. 
We have a little ground mustard and we're gonna do about a teaspoon of that. And um, I kind of just eyeball it as well. I might have broken that. That's okay. Oh, you just eyeball these. Yeah, I do. You can add more or less, it's up to you how you do it. Ground. I do a little paprika um, for just a little bit of a more flavor. Garlic powder, because I love garlic. It would be good in cheese. Yeah. Sometimes you can do like an onion powder as well if you like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit because we are simmering. And a little bit of black ground pepper. I wish there were rules about what number to put it on. Yeah, and the more you use your, it, it, it depends on the pot. Like I said, um, some of them have a temperature dial, some of them don't. So you'll get a fill for your, uh, your pot as the more you use it. You want me to shake this? Shake that up. And once that's shaken up, you'll just start adding about a quarter cup or a handful at a time and keep mixing that up and whisking it until it's melted. You want me um, to get it right on it? Yeah, go Is ahead. Is it ready? Yep, okay. it's ready. And um, we'll kind of take a, take a look to see um, what the consistency look, looks like. Stir In the meantime, constantly. Stir constantly. I'll yep. be quiet. And let me know if you need me to turn this up or down here, or you can do that. In the meantime, I will start on the chocolate. So we're gonna start off with two cups of semi-sweet uh, chocolate chips. I have sweetened condensed milk, just one can of that. I have a quarter cup of butter. We'll use some milk in there and some vanilla extract. So let me see what brand of vanilla extract you've got here. Nice. Just what I could find at the store. So. Okay. <laughs> and we'll start with putting, putting in the chocolate chips. We'll add in the condensed milk. Pretty much just combine everything in the fondue pot. And then I'll turn on the uh, pot slowly to melt slowly. Kind of like almost if you were using a double boiler. Exactly. And with the cheese and chocolate, obviously, these two are a little more, you have to watch when you're warming them up a little bit more than you do on the oil or the broth, because if you heat them too fast, it ruins it. Yeah, cheese and um, chocolate. chocolate both. Yeah, so this you gotta kinda pay attention a little bit more to. And do a cup of milk. Well, I think I'm doing great on the cheese. Yeah, looking good. It smells so adult with the wine in it. it and smells like it'll be tangy cheese, like really awesome. Mm -hmm. And that'll cook off a little bit. So I usually do end up adding a little bit more as, as we are uh, doing the fondue. Um, either that or if you find that it's getting a little bit um, hard, then you can ask, actually add in some milk as well into the cheese to kind of soften it up as it's cooking. Turn this on here. I'll add butter. And just a teaspoon of vanilla. Is that, a, that's all for that one then? That's all for that. And so now you're just going to, we're both going to be stirring constantly. We're going to be stirring, and getting yep. it heated up. Well, let's take a break while we do that. And when we come back, we're just going to dip stuff in. We don't have to wait for it to cook. So I can't wait for that. See you in a bit. If you could, what would you have in your kitchen? The quietest dishwasher? Sure. A big 28 cubic foot refrigerator? Oh, yeah. A true convection wall oven? Check. You'll find Frigidaire Professional Kitchen Appliances at Genuine Appliance in Hayes. They have all that, plus real stainless steel for fewer fingerprints and smudges. Frigidaire at Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th in Hayes. Your dream kitchen doesn't have to be a dream anymore. 
The easiest way for you to get anywhere in the country is the Hayes Regional Airport. Twice daily flights between Hayes and Denver means you are only 45 minutes from over 100 direct flights to get you to your destination as quick as possible. Service from SkyWest has completely changed the flight experience out of Hayes thanks to the 50 passenger jets that include complimentary beverages and an in-flight restroom. With free parking and short security lines, there has never been a better time to use the Hayes Regional Airport. The next time you travel, check Hayes first at flyhays.com to see the time and money you could save. Welcome back to Local Flavor. This cheese looks amazing and so does the chocolate, but I guess I'm more proud of this since I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we've been heating it up and we've just gotten it to um, where it's melted and it's, it's dippable. It's not something that needs to be real hot like the broth and the oil. So we've got both of them ready to start dipping our, our food in. I'm ready to start. Let's so we can use uh, the vegetables and the cheese, just like we did in the broth and the oil. Um, bread crumb or bread cubes. Look at that. Tortellinis, any of that. Also, um, apple slices and grapes are good to dip in the cheese. Those are really good. As for the chocolate, you can do, I have pretzel sticks here, strawberries, marshmallows, pound cake cubes. Um, you can do like cookie dough balls, um, cheesecake, say, oh, yeah, cheesecake any kind of fresh chocolate fruit. Would yeah. be awesome. um, fresh fruit, pineapple, apple slices, and that sort of stuff. So, um, well, you yeah. better start dipping. I'm way ahead of you. Got some marshmallow here. Little cheesecake Chocolate pieces would be amazing. Oh, yeah. I don't want a marshmallow. I know what a marshmallow is. <laughs> special ones. Is this how most people do it? You fill their plate and then? Yeah, start eating and go back for seconds. I, it's a bit of a mess, huh? Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do my cheese first. This, this cheese is so, it just smells like a really rich. The wine and the Swiss make it just, it's just such an adult grown up cheese. I mean, you could do the Velveeta too, but this is so not yeah. Velveeta. It's so it's a little bit different. So rich and sharp. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. That's delicious. All right. Well, I'm gonna try my chocolate. You go ahead, eat whatever you want. I'm gonna do. It's your party. I know. <laughs> mm. That's good. Chocolate. Yeah, and I like how it stays so nice and soft. Now keep in mind on the vegetables and the, the fruit for these two, make sure that your dippers are completely dry, otherwise the fondue is probably not gonna stick to it when you, when you dip in there. So your broccoli, your vegetables, your apple slices, that sort of stuff, if they're wet, the cheese is gonna come right off. So keep that in mind. Okay, and we keep these heated up and yes. keep stirring. Keep stirring. Okay, well, we have got a lot to eat here, so we'll have to leave you now, and I hope to see you next time on Local Flavor.